The sun is shining on beautiful Canvas Stadium as we get set for the second matchup on our double header here for the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament and the home of the Rams Colorado State Stadium. Getting ready for some awesome lacrosse happening out on the field. And we've got a fun matchup on our hands. We've got the Aggies coming into town from Utah State looking to take on the Falcons of Air Force Academy. So glad we could be with you, joining you on this Friday afternoon. Christian Sai is on the call, joined by our awesome production team at Stream It Sports, as well as our main sponsor, CSU Lacrosse. Thank you so much to them for making this all possible, letting us enjoy some good lacrosse and a beautiful look at the stadium right now. The two teams warming up, and let's dive right in. Let's start with the Utah State Aggies and their overall record. Nine and seven so far this season, four and one in division play. They're gonna be a team that plays tight, tight games, low scoring games specifically. DU, they beat just a few games ago, only one to nothing in their second to last game. They also lost to Montana State five to nine. So they're a team that plays tight defense, but also struggles to get that offense up and running. That's gonna be a, a point to look at for them. On the other side though, for the Falcons, they are the opposite of that. They get out to big, stop, uh, big starts, their offense is huge, and their defense is their talking point. They limit opponents to less than 10 goals per game on average. That's gonna be interesting to see how this matchup plays out between these two teams. And we've got a lot more to talk about with these two teams, but right now we're gonna step aside, and when we come back, we've got college lacrosse, the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament. All of that's coming up next right here on FanView TV. Norm. He lives with anxiety, but with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. Jason, let's go see your room.
Welcome back everyone to Canvas Stadium as we are just about ready for the opening faceoff between the Air Force Academy Falcons and the Utah State Aggies. Christian Science joining uh, joining you guys with uh, our stream of sports production team and we're excited to get some good lacrosse out here. We just came off of our Montana State uh, victory as they beat the Roadrunners in the game right before this. Now we've got another one on our hands. And hopefully a good matchup to follow. So, so let's talk about Utah State and their record to start. As I mentioned earlier, they're 9-7 overall, 4-1 and one in division play, though, and they're led by head coach Scott Bingham. But you could see their record there. Um, uh, most recently, a dominating victory at Wyoming, 20-3, and that's something that hopefully they can carry that momentum up as we move forward. Uh, also keep an eye on that 1-0 victory over DU, a tight fought battle for them on that side. Now Air Force on the other end of that, they're going to be a team that has a lot more scoring as you can see, all victories, all in the 20s. And they're holding their opponents, as I mentioned before, to an average of below 10 goals per game. That's a huge stat line for them. So this is going to be a tough opponent for the Aggies of Utah State. Not going to be an easy uh, easy team to go up against in the Air Force Falcons. This is a very dominant program that the Falcons have put together here this year. It should be a fun one as they come together up near midfield. The goalies take their nets. We are just about ready. Air Force playing out of the white and light blue. And Utah State, the Aggies playing out of the black and blue. Face off is controlled by the Falcons and we are underway. Bounce pass up on the right side for Air Force and it's corralled and taken up by Zach Mobius. Mobius has it beyond the crease and beyond the net. And they're going to set up and survey the playing field. As I mentioned earlier, Air Force, their only loss came earlier in the year to a non-conference in a non-conference game against Cal State San Marcos. But ever since then, they have been perfect this season. Aggies with the turnover, will, or the Aggies take the turnover and will take it back for their first possession of the afternoon. On attack now. Aggies are going to be an interesting one. They've got the black jerseys with the black letters, the black numbers. Just a, a little thin white outline around those numbers. That's going to be a fun one to keep, a, keep an eye on for us up in the booth. This one pass around to Spencer Bishop. Bishop around the edge, shot clock at 40. And a pass beyond the net. Trying to find a lane inside. They're going to have their first shot, and it's blocked by the foot of the goaltender, number 50, Trey Curtis. And Curtis scoops one up. Two good saves, and he'll send it down the line. Ben Booth was the aggressor on the attack for the Aggies. Shot inside, and a score for Air Force. And they get on the board first. A shot is in for Mark Tang. Air Force starting off strong offensively. Mark Tang with the completion. And it's important to mention those two good saves on the other side by Trey Curtis in the net. We'll take a look at the OB's replay. Or just a nice little stadium shot. There it is. Nice that little fake that kind of juked out the, the net miner. And now Air Force looking to get it on the faceoff but it will be a possession controlled by the Aggies. And a lost ball out of the bracket. Air Force with the chance now, as they had numbers, but they slowed it down and allowed their team to catch up. Around the edge, a little shot up and blocked up in the air. And out. Now some speed play coming down in the Whistle is blown, so it'll be Air Force possession. Air Force keeping it around that perimeter. As they look back, Zach Mobius with it. He loses the ball. 
He had slowed down, had a little bit of pressure, and Mobius has to get a little bit more separation, throws it in on the left hand, and it one hops it over the crossbar and out of the backside. Mobius just kind of took his eye off it and lost control of it, but now another chance here. Up the middle, and, and one with the assist. A beautiful shot made there by Benjamin Morfitt, and it's 2-0 Air Force. Morfitt was right there for the little pass in front. As you see the assist coming here. The assist was made by Goal, Michael Antaki. And actually that was Tang with the assist. Tang got the assist. He also got the first goal of the match. Making it 2-0 Air Force over the Aggies. Aggies have yet to put much offense up. Pass high and around the edge. Air Force uses speed a lot on offense. Too much speed there. Slip up. Still holding on to it. Left hand shot underneath through the legs of the defender and Mark Tang tack on another goal for him. And it's 3-0 Air Force. I mean, this Air Force team, not only their record, but also just from the short amount of time we've seen them here in this one, this is going to be a tough team for anyone to beat. As you see Tang with the goal right between the legs. Of the goalie, and it's 3 0. Aggies fallen behind early in this first quarter. Air Force just so quick out of the faceoff, too. <laughs> Getting control of it and resetting. Now they're going to take some time with a minute left on the play clock. <laughs> 11 minutes, 34 seconds in the first. Up the middle. One timer is snagged in the net. A good catch there by number 25, Zach Bla uh, Blamires. The Aggies with a chance here. Lose it off the tip, and it will be Air Force possession. Air Force up the middle and off to the side to Nicholas Capanelli. Capanelli now to Morbius. Morbius spins it across. Capanelli puts a little screen on and gets the ball back. Spin move and shoots, and it's tipped away. Zach Blymeyers, the senior in the net from Woods Cross, Utah. Stays in possession of Air Force. Paul Medina around the edge. Now going to work, spin move. And it will be an Aggie possession on the errant shot. Zach Mobius, a lot of speed on the attack. Pass across from one long pole to another. Now over the middle, and now the Aggies get to go on attack. A lot of white jerseys surrounding, though. They have to back up to create a perimeter. Spencer Bishop with it at the point. Freddie Kurtz around and onto the edge and behind the net, and they circle the net now. Now looking for a shot inside. Spin move around defender underneath, snakes through, and it stays out of the net. That ball was towing the line, and they ended up keeping it out. Trent Curtis with another save. He's got three saves so far in the first. Slap on the wrist there. And another one. Trying to get through to that stick. And now the whistle is blown. Timeout. And it looks like we've got a timeout by the Falcons. 
The Falcons control a three to nothing lead here against the Aggies and we will step aside and take a break. You're watching college lacrosse on FanView. Hey Lolo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back, everyone, as we take a look at Air Force having discussions right now. Air Force led by head coach Robert Kohler, who was in in that huddle talking to his teammates. He has had a very successful year with the Falcons this year. We've talked a lot about their record and both their offense and defense being formidable on both sides of the field. And all of that starts with their head coach, Robert Kohler. Getting things done for his Falcons. Falcons with it right now on possession. We'll start off around the edge and they will create a perimeter and work inward. Benjamin Mor Morfitt going one on one. Morfitt stick low, now goes stick high, fakes the pass and then does pass it for the one timer shot from the edge. It's good. Goal made by Jacob Freeman on the assist from Morfitt and it is 4 0 Air Force. Goal by number five, Jacob Freeman. Take a look at this replay here. You see just a nice perfect pass there by Morfitt. And he hit him right when his stick was high. And bringing it down, Jacob Freeman with the goal. Make it four to zero. Face off coming. They got some motion up on the front. And that live replay and sponsored support of Colorado State men's lacrosse and the 2023 Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament are courtesy of Obies in Fort Collins. Give a big shout out to them. As right now we've got the ball in possession of the Aggies. Aggies with it around the edge. He's still trying to get that first goal on the scoreboard. And they entered the crease. crease so a crease violation called on the Aggies, and that's a mistake you can't have down by four as they scoop up a mistake from the Air Force on an errant pass. And the Aggies now will have it and get another chance here. Ben Booth around the edge, keeping that stick out of harm's way. Ben Booth trying to find an angle, and it is scooped down by Curtis in the net. Air Force hustling with it down the line on a breakaway. And out of bounds. That ball will be heading towards the Aggies' side. And here come the Aggies with 79 seconds added to the play clock. Seven minutes and 48 seconds remain in period number one. Aggies formulating a play. And now up top. Just doing a quick little rotation here. Braden Kurtz, Brady Kurtz making a move up the middle, pass it on the corner. And now up, one hot pass is in and out of the stick of his intended target, number 21, Seth Franks. Uh, Air Force called on a delay of game penalty. You see number nine, Mackenzie Miller in the box. So a man advantage now. Aggies with it. 
trying to get some shots on goal here. They've had good defense being played all game long. Shot off to the right side and out on the back with 7.01 remaining. And now they have to resort to defense here. Motion around the edge as Benjamin Morfitt showing off his speed, just blowing past long poles to get up near the 35. Just pacing behind that net, waiting for an opening. 50 seconds on the play clock, up by four. Air Force pushes the center. All the way up, walks right up to the goal, but then loses a stick. So the iron hits the ground, and it will be Aggies' possession now. The Aggies have still yet to get their first, their first goal of the game, but they've had some good looks. Just good overall goaltending by the net miner, Trey Curtis, the senior. Aggies are doing a good job putting some good possessions together. They've held on to the rock for a while and formulated some good plays. But as I mentioned, Curtis is doing a good job in the net, stopping anything that gets close. Right now, the Aggies going on another push and a corner shot stopped by Curtis. Scooped up, though, on the rebound. Ben Booth with it up top and around on the edge. Michael Stock handles it towards the Mountain West logo and then across. A little stick action, and it's scooped up by Booth, who still holds on to it. They'll slow it down and walk. You got 45 seconds on the play clock, so they have some time. Get something set up here. All the way across and under the net. Up top. And he loses it. 25 seconds, that one is scooped up by Air Force. So a spoiled possession, and now Air Force is on the attack. Up with a good shot, and he overshoots that top crossbar. And out. Had a good look there for the Falcons, but couldn't quite execute on the finish. 4 to 0 still the score on the sub in. Air Force sends the middle. Now here's Morfit with it. Morfit has a lot of speed and can make guys miss as he does right there, but there's someone to help. And that shot goes wide right of the net. Stopped by our backstop. Jumping motion and, and through, and he threads the needle there. Mark Tang, third goal of the first. Mark Tang just found that little opening on the inside seam of the net, and he makes it a five to nothing game. You see how tight of a lane he was in this. Making a miss and then just, it looks like he went right between the legs. I have goaltender Zach Blymeyers at OB's replay. And Air Force continuing to roll forward. A scrum in the middle for the, the possession and it's still has not been gobbled up. Now it is. Air Force has it. And Air Force on the run. Jacob Freeman finding that far side. A break away to the 30, and then he pulls up and gives his, his attackers a chance to get set. Benjamin Morfitt giving himself a breather. Just getting ready to turn on the Jets. Here he comes, 
And there they are. Fakes the pass. He's double teamed. Now he has to dish it out on the outside. Trying to snake through and a little bounce shot by Zach Morbius is out and right into the tunnel. Running is a part of their stupid school. Here come the Falcons around the corner. And that corner shot has been nothing but money for them so far in this first six to nothing on the goal by Mark Tang. Mark Tang, that's where he's living right now. Number 20, Mark Tang. His fourth of the game. Fourth goal so far for Tang as you take a look. And our OB's replay down that top left corner. And those are the, that's that spot that you work on in practice when you see these guys out here with the double nets. you just finding that edge, finding that top corner for the goal. So the Aggies with it on the faceoff. We'll roll the clock. Three minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first. Six nothing Air Force. The Aggies yet to get on the board. Spencer Bishop all the way over on the far side. That's Jake Okelberry. Okelberry gets through, finds the middle, but it goes off the stick of one of the Air Force defenders. And now it is Air Force with Morfit running through the middle. Or Morbius, I should say. Morbius finds a lane and a good block there made on the save by Zach Blymeyers. So a nice save made there in the crease by Zach. But Air Force comes up with the rebound. They'll get another shot here. Under two minutes. Good saves or something Pass like that. across, that's Morfit. Morfit, one on one. Try to go above the head, but that one was tipped out of his basket and on the ground, scooped up by Air Force and a whistle down, and it'll be Aggies in possession. Aggies still with it now as Spencer passes it over the top. That's going to be Brady Kurtz. Spencer again off to Kurtz and around the edge. Circle the net, trying to find that middle. Here comes the attack, thrown up the top, and it is mishandled at the top. They're going to have to try to scoop it, and Air Force gets up to it. Air Force was working those recovery drills before, and a big hit laid out at the middle, at the 35 line, at the 35 yard line. A huge hit laid out, and the whistle is blown down. It's Air Force possession, but a nice hit there for the Aggies. Up the middle, you got a crashing attacker. Would have had that play there. Flag comes out. So a delayed penalty on coming for the Aggies. Once Air Force loses possession. So basically a free play here for Air Force as the penalty is incoming for the Aggies. Flag is down near the 10 yard line. Thirty-seven seconds. As Morfit tries to find the middle, and a whistle is blown. There's no shot. Nice little play there, if that had counted. But the whistle was blown down, and we'll get we'll get an eye on what this penalty is. Tyson Biggs will be called on a penalty. 
Biggs will be out for a minute. And the man advantage will go to Air Force, but that will do it for the first quarter. The Falcons, a dominating start to the first, and they are up six to nothing here. And just a reminder, everyone, that live replays and sponsor support of Colorado State men's lacrosse and the 2023 Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament are all courtesy of Obie's in Fort Collins. Fresh subs, salads, and soups from a local shop where good food means good mood. Obie's is two miles east of Canvas Stadium and right down Prospect at LeMay. And also a huge shout out and thank you as well to our main sponsor, CSU Lacrosse, for making this all possible being able to bring you this live coverage of these games throughout this tournament. We've got games today, as you're seeing, and then, uh, and then we've got some more action coming up the rest of this weekend as this tournament continues. And it'll be a lot of fun to continue watching these. But we're going to step aside and take a break here for a moment. And when we come back, we've got the second quarter of action. You're watching lacrosse right here on FanView TV. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back, everyone, to the second quarter as we get ready to get underway. 15 minutes on the clock for the second quarter. Air Force 6, Utah State 0. And let's take a look at the men in the net for these two teams, starting with the Aggies. As you can see, number 25, Zach Blamire is the senior from Woods Cross, Utah. He's the man mining the net tonight for Utah State. And on the other side, you've got Trey Curtis, who's had some huge stops so far in this first quarter. And he is the reason they are at 6-0. Aggies, although the score is pretty lopsided, they've had some good looks in that first quarter. It's not been a complete dominance offensively just for Air Force. They've just had very good defensive play in the net and on the field. Aggies lose control of it, and Air Force regains possession. They're on offense, on attack, to start the second period. Nice play there, keeping it in for the Falcons. Morbius across up at the top, looking for a one-timer, and it's wide left. That shot on by Jacob Freeman was just a little bit too much to that left corner. And went over the back. Now through the center and mishandled, and it will go out of bounds. And mishandled by Nicholas Caponelli. So the side switch. And now the Aggies will get a chance on that errant pass. Up and coming across the edge, and the Aggies will take it from the sideline. Aggies hoping for some action here in this second quarter. Trailing 6-0. As I mentioned earlier, some good shots on goal early in the first, just very good saves in the net by Curtis. And they're going to play around the perimeter right now as they look to go on attack. Thirty-seven seconds on the play clock right now. Air Force still just working around the outside. And this pass is mishandled, and the Air Force have it, and they're moving up the field. Mil Mackenzie Miller on the breakaway, and he'll throw it up center, get it up, and then that pass got tipped. It looked like someone might have got a stick involved there, and it is poked out of the backside, and the Aggies will get another shot. Blemeyer out of the net to bring that one back. You might be able to hear a little bit that wind picking up somewhat. It's been off and on so far throughout the morning into this afternoon. Well, that was really good. Uh, well, I 
did that because um, it's my but out there on the field just beautiful weather for good lacrosse that turf is probably just the perfect temperature and we've all played on turf that's when it's 90 degrees outside and the turf feels like it's 120 right now this is this is good weather for college lacrosse The Aggies still holding on to it around the edge with 30 seconds on the play clock. Ball sneaks out of the basket and is tipped away by Air Force, and Air Force comes up with it. They have to dish it out to one of the attackers near midfield, and now they'll get a chance here as they flip the field and take over. Jake Oakleberry up with it and throws it back behind net. And actually, that's Nick uh, Jack Ninos who had it. Correction. Air Force still playing keep away on the edge. Now they decide to attack and bring it inside. A little bit of an awkward catch there on the edge. Still time though, 30 seconds to make something happen. They pick up the pace a little bit though. Flying through the center and Blamire with a nice stop. It's a good shot on goal, but Blamire saw it the whole way. And now the Aggies with an opportunity here, trying to pick up their first score of the game. And a helmet is down, flag is out. There's going to be some contact called there on Air Force. So Air Force called the penalty called on John Letty and a one man advantage. Air Force penalty number four. John Letty with the hold. The one man advantage for the Aggies off the hold. They're playing the perimeter game. Circling the net. Goes middle. Going for the shot. One tire scooped up by Trey Curtis and out. It was a great shot. And Curtis was ready for it. Nice little short hop. And he picked out of the dirt. The Aggies still holding on to possession, but a good save made by Curtis. Air Force is a lot of solid pieces that they have in this lineup. Looking to reset that play clock, I believe. Ten thirty three here in the second quarter. Still waiting. Not sure if this was a play clock issue or something else. They are discussing, one of the officials is on the sideline discussing it with the scoreboard operator. And now they roll the play clock. So the Aggies still holding on to possession here. A high pass goes up and out, and they will turn it over. Couple, couple minor mistakes of that nature for the Aggies, but so far it's just been the speed and athleticism of Air Force that's drawn them about and the defensive play by Curtis in the net for the Falcons. Falcons have some dangerous tools at their disposal. Falcons center it and spin it back out. On the back end and up to Ninos. Cross to Blanchard. And all the way back around. Nice ball movement. 30 seconds. 35 seconds on the clock. Looking for an opportunity to set to center it. Or get himself some room up in the middle. 20 seconds on the play clock. Finds the center. There it is, and the block was made by Blamier. He traps that one against the turf and sends it down. Nice save made there by Bla uh, Blamier. Zach with a couple good saves here in the second quarter. Six nothing still. 
Air Force hasn't been able to capitalize on any offense in the second. So far, those first six came all in the first. The Aggies taking their time, and now they will call a timeout. So a timeout for the Aggies, as they were really happy about what was going on in the field. So they're going to take a break, and we'll take one right with them. The score is six to nothing, Air Force over the Aggies. Every year, 4.5 million young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 visit the ER. It's every parent's nightmare. Umergency gives you all the tools you need to quickly and effectively manage your family's emergency. Umergency provides instant access to vital resources, customized to your student's campus and local community, digital consent form, and built-in urgent alert button. Umergency gives you peace of mind when you need it most. Download your Umergency app now. Welcome back here to Canvas Stadium. As you can see, the beautiful home of the Rams lit up by this gorgeous day. The sun is shining, a little bit of a breeze, getting a little chilly, but other than that, not too bad. Got some fans scattered throughout the lower levels of the stadium, enjoying some good lacrosse, and the score says 6-0 out there, Air Force over Utah, but the Aggies have done a good job, actually, especially against a very powerful Air Force team. They've done a good job of getting some opportunities offensively, getting some good shots on goal. They've just had Someone in that other net in Trey Curtis, who's done a good job of really stopping anything that's come his way. And then on the other side of that, Zach Blumeyers has also done a good job in net. The second quarter, he's had some pretty big saves on their end. So the Aggies seemingly finding a bit of a rhythm here, but they still have a little bit of work to do. Down six to a very good Air Force Academy team. We'll see if they can find a way to Turn it on a little bit here, coming into the midway through this second the second period. Eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second. The Aggies will have possession of it around the edge, and they're going to find the top to set for a play. 30 seconds on the play clock. Aggies sweep it around the corner, trying to find a lane in the middle. Can't find one, so they're going to set it the other way. Up top and up. Going through the spin cycle is Bryson Fell. Through the middle, shot up high and out for Braxton Fell. Braxton and Bryson passing it back and forth, ending in a missed shot. But the Aggies still with it. Got one second left on the clock. And it will be a play clock violation. So Air Force takes advantage of the shot clock violation. Get it back on the other side. That pass intercepted, but Air Force holds on to it as it was batted down. And they'll be able to set up around the perimeter for a play. Entering into the match. Number three, Trey Downing. Downing has it now. And he'll sweep it across and behind. Over to center, they're going to try to cut across the middle. That's Morbius. Up to the center now. A lot of defense being played there. A lot of sticks going through. And here comes a flag as Morbius was fighting his way into the center. And a push from behind threw him to the turf. So the Aggies will now be shorthanded. So Will Cooper Williams gets called on the push as we'll take a look at our OB's replay. Cooper Williams, number three, gets called on the push right there. 
And so it will be a shorthanded play for the Aggies, a one-man advantage for Air Force. Air Force up top in the middle. And on the backside, one-timer is good on the 90-mile-an-hour bolt from the backside. Nicholas Capanelli flings one into the net. And the first goal of the second quarter comes with 6 minutes 49 seconds remaining, and it's 7 to nothing. So the face-off specialist scored. See Capanelli with it, just winds up and lets it fly. Seven zip. Face-off specialist in the middle. Air Force with the tip up. And that ball sneaks out and should be controlled by the Aggies. The Aggies have some room and numbers. Spinning through and a layout hit up in the middle, and here comes the flag. A blindside hit was imposed right near the 25 by Air Force, and that likely will be what the flag is on. We'll see what the, the official call is. Madigan Hiltz laid down a hit. And it will be Hiltz who takes a seat in the penalty box. I mean, that was some, that was some hang time on that hit. So an unnecessary roughness call on Hiltz. Will set the Aggies in a man advantage. Aggies breaking the sides, up the middle, now across. Seeing if they want to shoot it through, and they do, but it looked like it snuck through that turf a little too quick and off to the side. Spencer Bishop with the shot, and the Aggies will start over with 58 seconds on the play clock. Another shot coming, a little jump shot will be off there, missing that far corner. They've gone low on Curtis a handful of times, and Curtis has been able to scoop that up, so they're looking to go high and wide, but they've just been too high and too wide on these last few shots. They're going to try again, and the same issue. Aggies point the stick out at it, and they retain possession. 53 seconds on the play clock. Got the stick on it. Was an Air Force long pull. And they have to recenter it. Spencer across on the right side. One timer off the leg of a defender. And they hold on to it. 30 seconds now on the play clock. Aggies through the middle. Jump shot, score! First goal of the game for the Aggies. Comes in the second quarter, and they're on the board 7 to 1. Utah State goal. We take a look at the Obies replay. Nice assist and the finish there. A great goal put on by number three. Number three, number, uh, I believe that was number nine, Ben Booth. So Ben Booth picks up his first goal. And the Aggies are on the board. Five fifteen remaining in the second. Aggies still with it, spinning around their defenders. Aggies have, has definitely won the possession game here in this second quarter. As they're going to switch out some players, get a new line in. Bryson Fell with it. Fell on the edge. A little bit of action coming in on the inside. Pass wide across. They're going to take a shot that was tipped away by Curtis. Curtis got a stick on it. Go, 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 
Play clock resumes. The Aggies still in possession here, just waiting for an opportunity. They've had a couple good shots on goal. They had just had their first goal. Now looking for another one. Holding Air Force defense in, at bay. At 50 seconds on the play clock, so still plenty of time. He didn't have a shot there. Pass through, and the stick has it. Air Force trying to complete the turnover, and they do. Turnover made there, and now Air Force is on the attack. Air Force sliding through, getting through a lot of black jerseys. Underneath, fake shot, and the stick is held back from behind and dropped, and the Aggies pick up a turnover. Aggies sending it up the field. Back and forth we go. Aggies lose it. It's on the ground. Ball still on loose on the ground. Three white jerseys around it, and Air Force comes up with it. Air Force now moving through it, and they're down, and there comes the flag. Might be a hold at the end of that play. We'll see who comes up with it. It's Air Force, so the Aggies will get a, or the Air Force will get a delayed penalty. This should be on the Aggies when this play is blown dead or the Aggies get possession of it. So delayed penalty coming. Air Force slows it down, wanting to take advantage of this free play. Capanelli, who had the most recent goal for the Falcons, passes it up top to John Letty. Letty around the corner and behind the net. 28 seconds on the play clock. Pushing through the center, up the middle. Letty with the shot, and it's blocked. And now they blow the whistle for the delayed penalty. So after the blocked shot, they, the Aggies will now be playing at a shorthanded situation here. Utah State shorthanded, one man advantage for the Falcons. A little skip pass in there for Cap Capanelli and around across the center, up high and into the tunnel over the top of the net. Air Force keeping it moving around that perimeter. Their possession time has been much lower in this second period. In this second period, shot goes center, and it's on the ground, fighting for control of it. And it looks like the Aggies came up with it for a moment, and it's still rolling out. And the Aggies now finally get possession entirely. A lot of mishandled passes, but they're able to finally corral it and. Throw it up center, good pass up to the middle, near midfield. Aggies around the edge, he gets a corner. Up to the 20 and it is blocked down. Air Force scoops it up. Nice play by the long pole. That one will go back towards the Aggies on the whistle by the officials. Just over a minute remaining in the first half. A misplayed pass by the Aggies is tipped back, and, they, and they'll be able to scoop it up and dish it back out. But another tough pass up the middle. Air Force with a chance here. And we got another whistle out on the field. And Air Force will take a timeout with 47 seconds on the clock, 7 to 1, the score. And with that, we'll take a 30 second break and finish out the first half when we come back. Meet Norm. He lives with anxiety. But with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, 
machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. Welcome back here. 47 seconds on the game clock. 7-1 to Air Force. As we are just about finished with this first half. That first quarter, it was all dominated by Air Force. But this second quarter, only one goal for the Falcons. They were up 6-0 in the first. Second quarter, only one, and they've given up one. So not much change from what we've seen in that first. But still a commanding lead for the Falcons. I think what they've seen, at least at this point, is that the Aggies, they've put, they've put some good possessions together. They're not a team that they're going to be able to just walk over. If you were here when you saw the, the graphic that showed you their record, the Air Force record, coming into this match, they, 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 they're beating most of their teams in the mid-20s to nothing, or in the mid-20s to, to low-scoring games. So you're thinking 22 to 7, 22 to 4, 22 to 5. And the Aggies are not letting them do this. 7 to 1 so far here at this point. Air Force with it. Will likely take one of the last shots in this first half. Play clock is turned off. 20 seconds now on the game clock. Making a move up the middle. Good pass in and blocked by Blamires. He's going to send it deep with 10 seconds. See if they could throw a Hail Mary out there. Get something on net. Three seconds. Got to put, put a shot on it. Up in the middle. That was a good look. But it bounced right by Trey Curtis, who gets the save, only giving up one goal in the first half. And that will do it for the first half of action. Air Force 7, Utah State 1. We're going to step aside and take a break. And when we come back, we've got the second half of action as you're watching College Lacrosse and the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament here on FanView TV. Jason, let's go see your room. other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Six oh five of them were hits. I thought, Tank, but yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> is this first name Lou? All right. I like your uh, shot of the your your never ending loop of the infinity. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, we come back in like a minute, and every other minute we just do breakdowns. You know, stat stat breakdowns. And we do halftime shows. And yep. <laughs> I think that sounds sounds like something we need to do. Just give, give ourselves a lot of extra work. Yeah. We were just talking about like just because we can, like we could put a run on air running like five broadcast teams should be some deck here. Yeah. But they're paying half as much, so it's like be careful about how much we give them. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Half as much. True. True. Our uh, yeah. So our, so so one of you is running camera and I was gonna say, I'm like, I guess, I, I guess if you're right. Yeah, I didn't but talk see about it, talk about it like it's the full production yeah, yeah, thing, because yeah. they don't know. Thanks to our 15 production <laughs> crew, <laughs> it's, it's in the back. We've got Mario. six guys on, on replay. It's time time to throw in our statistician, <laughs> who might be a little off on this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'll tell you what, Samantha, she's been known to yeah, right. put in a few extra numbers Start here, it out. here and there. That's funny. I don't understand. Samantha started talking about yards per play. This is the <laughs> yeah. wrong. I, I yeah, know it's right. a football field out there. But I know every once in a while I'm like, he's at the 20. He's at the 25. <laughs> he's going to the 30. He's past he the shoots. 30. He's, yeah, right. he's in the end zone, and now he's coming back. Speaking of shooting and scoring, we got avalanche. Um, that last game was just. Not only I haven't been able to watch any of the games, and that was the first one of the playoffs I've been able, like I've been working. To. Yeah, not only that, like they just, they just. My my whole family's from Seattle, and I'm an Avs oh. fan. Well, I'm an Avs fan because I moved after or before the Kraken were a thing, so I can I can't say like oh I'm a Kraken fan because I lived in Seattle. Like you know, like I I've, I've been here for the last two years. Uh, well, you were in school here with the Avalanche. Cor here. Correct. Like it, correct. And so and we didn't. And the, crap, the Seattle never had a team. Yeah. So it's not like I grew up with Seattle. And I'm like true. Now, if you were a fan of the Sounders instead of the Rapids, like that would make more sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yes. Correct. Um, or the Mariners or the Rockies, like yeah. those kind of things. Uh, well, and that's. I was gonna say that's an easy one, but yeah, the Mariners have been they had some Rockies year, years, for too. decades. Yeah. Um, I, it's like I can't, I can't move past the Griffey era, no one and just like uh, allow Seattle to be anything but that era and because it's, it's just like just like just like the Seahawks are only the the Legion of Boom, Marshawn Lynch, Russell Wilson era. Like that's. Yeah. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Like they're still, you know, they were in the playoffs this, this year, but that's that's all I know. The Seahawks. But yeah, no. So my family's all because because the fact that they were playing the Abs, I'm like, all right, well, I'm an Abs fan now. Like I, you know, I've been here for a few years. I got I was cheering for them when they won the Stanley Cup, like every single game. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an Abs fan. Um, so I'm like, oh great, I get to trash talk my family and get a series win. And oh god, that hasn't gone well. Now I gotta hear, hear about that. Yeah, my cousin's like a diehard Kraken fan. Like season tickets. Uh, she's in college at UW. Season tickets. She's going to every game. She's like studies their stat sheets. I mean, she's like obsessed with them. Um, yeah, like diehard fan, and so she's just smack talking nonstop in our group chat. Like, and I'm like, oh god. I thought, I thought I, she even admitted she's like, you know, I, I'm hoping we just like win two games out of the series. Like that was her goal, and now she's like, oh, we're the only freaking smoke you guys. The hard part is um, when looking at coming into the playoffs, you're, I think it was way too much of hope and crossing fingers yeah. that, that uh, things would be, I, I will tell you the interesting thing is the Nuggets were the ones that I was worried about more. A hundred percent. And they were the ones that came out showing you shouldn't have. Yep. But like their last, you know, like all the games that they played since All-Star break, you're like, have you seen their record? Yeah. yeah. Since the All-Star? Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, we'll just turn it on. I know they've been really up and down. It's very 
It, it is scary because you know they're playing the Patriots. Jamal Murray has been probably the the biggest like. He's carried them so much. Dude, well the last game. He's like like this. Yeah. You, he like, does. Paul Murray, yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like Jokic was like 0 for 11 or something like that at one point. I saw. And they were still like. Yeah. Oh yeah, that last game. I went to that last game. Really. Like, I think we brought up Marty and I brought up early on where we were like, well, what do we need to do? You know, How do you want to go back on? And in the end, once we discovered, to say, well, well, it's, it's just, just up to Garrett and, and, and Ryan and them to figure out what they to pay for it. So we didn't know until last Thursday. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Every year, 4.5 million young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 visit the ER. It's every parent's nightmare. Emergency gives you all the tools you need to quickly and effectively manage your family's emergency. Emergency provides instant access to vital resources, customized to your student's campus and local community, digital consent form, and built-in urgent alert button. Emergency gives you peace of mind when you need it most. Download your Emergency app now. Welcome back, everyone, to Canvas Stadium in Fort Collins, Colorado. 7-1 to the score as we get set for the second half of action between Air Force Academy, who's up 7, to Utah State, who's trailing by 6. The Aggies putting together a good second quarter, though, as they were able to get on the board with the score of their own and only give up one score, one goal in the second quarter. And as we were talking about it during break with some of our production team, uh, many of those goals, a large handful, have come from Mark Tang, who is on the attack for Air Force. He's been one of those very 
stellar players who's played a lot of high level lacrosse and uh, and he's bringing that experience into this club level to be able to to, to kind of show off those talents at this level and doing a very good job out there and he's also got a, a, a good good player in the net and Curtis who has been very good with some good saves I don't have the official numbers on his saves and stats but uh, he's having a very successful game only one goal has snuck through his line of defense Air Force with it commanding in possession as we get set for the third quarter And the Falcons will take it to start as they slow it down. Trey Downing, another quick, speedy player we see on attack a lot. Zach Morbius up there with him. A lot of speed, a waving swing and a miss. And some pushing coming up on the far side as that ball is turned back over to Air Force. Air Force has it beyond the perimeter. And now they're going to turn it over. And the Aggies will take it. So the Aggies have possession here. That pass bounces down at the feet of Brady Kurtz. And Kurtz dishes it off to the corner. Kurtz with it up top. And he's got Spencer Bishop, who goes back to Kurtz, and Kurtz on the edge. Kurtz and Bishop playing catch with it. Now Kurtz turns on the Jets around the side, trying to get an angle. Shoots it through, and Curtis with the save. Bounces off a shin. And Air Force will bring it up. Air Force on the breakaway for Copanelli. Behind the net. And around for Morbius. And the ball snaked out. Actually, that was Tang who had it. Tang with the many goals in the first. Five out of the six of the goals in that first quarter came from Tang. That pass goes wide. Right and out. Air Force with it. Up the middle. Trying to go behind the back. That was Benjamin Morfitt who tried to just sling one over the head. And he couldn't quite get it past his defender. And it bounced out, so now he will get a chance to inbound. Zach Morbius, spin move, trying to get through two defenders and has to dish it up to the top. Top of the zone, up through, and that high shot goes out and over. 16 seconds on the play clock. You're going to have to hurry up a little bit here for the Falcons. Pushing in, gonna go with the backhand here. Nice little tip shot, follow through, and it counts. So a goal for Air Force. They start off strong as Benjamin Morfitt just tipped one into the net. And you'll see on this replay, this OB's replay, just like a little, little bounce pass that he took. It's a little deflection into the net. You'll see this pass right here. And then just a little bounce right there. Nice placement. Nice touch. Face-off specialist going to work. And it's scooped up by Air Force and dropped down by the Aggies on the long pull. And they scoop it up, and they're going to bring it the other way. Up the middle and on the side. And it looks like a drop as Utah, Brady Kurtz got away with one. Sends it behind the net. Now up on the corner, up top. 
Another mishandled pass. That's two in this possession. They save them both. It's kind of like a wide receiver. Trevor Crosby. When, uh, all the way around the center. Make sure you catch the ball. That'll be your third mishandled pass. There's now Crosby so with it. With 30 seconds to go here. Spencer around the edge. Bounce pass in. Bounce shot in. And it is wide left. Spencer Bishop with a nice look, just couldn't quite get it on target. 25 seconds now to complete the play. Fifteen on the clock. Here come the Aggies with solid defense. Now you got under ten. Behind the net, gonna have to move. Up to the middle, one-timer, wide and high over the crossbar. And three seconds now for the Aggies to make something happen. They're going to have to get it in, inbound and then nothing. So they just send it to the corner and let the clock restart. And Air Force gets it. Morfitt around his man and toes the sideline, stays in bounds, even inside that red line. Now it's Morbius across and batted down, stolen away for the Aggies. Set it up inside the crease. Now the Aggies on the break, on the attack, good passing. Kept alive, but meandering their way back out of the zone. Cooper Williams, the sophomore, coming from Baltimore. He has it. And around to the top. Putting on the speed. Shot, save, two saves by Curtis on two back-to-back -back shots by the Aggies. And Curtis with a phenomenal showing there, keeping that ball out of the net. I mean, if we had players of the game so far, my player of the game is Curtis. I, mean, I know his team is up by seven, but he's had some tough shots that he's been able to control. And a steal comes from Air Force as they get it away. And they'll pass it up. Air Force with space from the corner, and a bullet shot is through for Jack Ninos. Ninos. Puts some fire behind that one and sends it into the net. Not much you can do if you're in the goal. And again, another one of those plays that we talk about that's set up by two saves in the net by Curtis. One, two right there. Sends it up the field. And perfect setup for Ninos to just rear back and fire. Not much you can do for Zach Blymeyers. And Blamires has had a few good saves as well, especially in that second quarter. That one just near impossible to keep track of. Fakes the shot, and it goes up, and it's recovered by the Aggies. So the Aggies now trail 9-1. And again, another one of those situations where their, their offense has been, their attackers have been in position and in possession a good amount of this second half so far, but just have not been able to execute. They do a lot of play around the perimeter, but once they get inside, they just seem like they don't have the speed to match Air Force. And, and of course, the net miner for Air Force, Trey Curtis. That one sneaks through. Curtis gobbles it up and sends it wide and deep. The pass was into traffic, though, and the Aggies take it back. Seven minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third.
And here they come. Aggies with it. Doing a little s reversal. We got a broken stick down on the field. Here's the shot coming, and it's blocked by a defender. Got a broken stick up near the 20 by one of the Air Force players. And now Air Force has it, and they're on a three-on-three. -three moving up the field, and a mishandled pass. He would have been set up perfectly for the shot if he had maintained possession of that. And the Aggies come up with it with Spencer in control now. Spencer has to send it wide as he was being haggled by a defender. Here's the shot on the way, and the one-timer is good. The shot goes through for Utah's Brady Kurtz, and it's 9-2. to two. Kurtz taking advantage of a mistake made on the other side, giving the ball back to the Aggies, and Kurtz comes up with it and fires one, a little bounce shot, and Curtis unable to handle that one. And you've got yourself a 9-2 ball game here with 6 minutes 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And a holding call. We'll give it to Air Force. Jacob Freeman on with it at the point, passing the Mountain West logo and now sends it behind the net. And here they come around the corner trying to find a cross field pass and they do up under the net and on the side of his body is number 26, Nicholas Campanelli, his second goal of the game. And that one comes from near the 30-yard line out all the way into that corner side of the net. And a good shot. Campanelli was just ranging to his right, going across, saw a bit of a lane, and one hopped it through. And Blamires could not get his stick underneath it. So another face-off, this time handled cleanly by an Air Force, and they send it up well into the zone of the Aggies, and the Aggies were all over it. Up the middle to the right now. The Aggies still with it. Need to get rid of it, then they do. And the long pole can go back to his intended spot as they bring the attackers out. The Aggies bring in Michael Stock, who dishes it out around the edge. 30 seconds, 34 seconds on the play clock. Coming through the middle. And a lot of white jerseys in the way. And they poke it away. Pass goes straight up the middle. Nice completion on the pass. Bounce pass, but no one was there. And the net miner leaves the net, trying to get to it before it goes out. And it will stay in possession of Air Force. Up the middle, on that right side of the field. Air Force taking their time with four minutes and 38 seconds in the third quarter. They command an eight point lead, an eight goal lead, 10 to two. The Falcons around the edge with 25 seconds on the play clock. Going to have to make something happen here soon. Up the middle. Here's a shot incoming. There it is. 
And Blymeyers tips it up in the air. Trying to get the trap on it. Still with it, and he finally scoops it up. Blymeyers out of the pocket, out of the crease, and gives it off to his man on the corner. Brady Kurtz. And Kurtz off to the side now. In control of it is Cooper Williams. Cooper Williams running straight ahead. Right underneath. And what a save by Curtis. Right in front of the pressure, Curtis was able to get a stick on it, but then passed it right back into the hands of an Aggie player. I mean, you don't get much closer to the goal than that. I mean, he was about as close to the crease as you can be without being in it. He got the shot off, but Curtis able to one-hop it and get the block and the save. Curtis again, another phenomenal stop. That one, not much of a save, just snagged it out of the air and was able to dish it off to one of his players. Curtis entering, the, leaving the zone to get that ball up the field. And now Air Force controls it on their side. A quick moving third quarter here. Nope, not many penalties, no timeouts yet. 10 to two, not a lot of scoring either. Both sides have been pretty quiet since that first. And honestly, if that first quarter hadn't happened for Air Force, this would, have been a, this would be a totally different ball game. Six goals scored in the first, which is why you see such a dominant lead right now by the Falcons. Up on the side and lost it as Air Force Trey Downing. Downing up top, 15 seconds on the play clock. Pass and shot underneath, and it's good. Through the outstretched arms of Plamires. And in for the score. And that would be oh, Nicholas Caponelli with another goal. Three, three on the afternoon. Take a look at the OB's replay for Caponelli. Similar to his last goal. Fading right. He really likes that, that angle on the right-handed shot. Able to get that one to sneak through. And it's 11 to 2. Air, Air Force gets called on a face-off violation and they have to give the ball back to the Aggies. See, in the last game that we were doing right before this, with Montana State playing Metro State, I mean, you could tell in watching it that the, the time of possession was pretty lopsided. Montana State was able to control the majority of those offensive possessions. And it felt like Metro was playing on their heels the majority of the game. This game, even though the score says 11 to 2 is and Aggies fighting for it, it, it feels like the time of possession has been much more balanced. The Aggies just have not been able to execute and get that ball past Trey Curtis as Curtis blocks one in the crease again. Bounce pass there. A bounce shot there that did not get through. Nice hit near midfield. As they run through a defender. And they'll reset to get some attackers out. Jacob Freeman with the ball. Coming in on the sideline is Benjamin Morfitt. Morfitt trades places. And here's Freeman. Freeman with the bounce shot on the back. And out wide. Take a look at this. This just big play that we saw just a second ago. This hit. It's a great play. Ran into a bit of a wall there as they're fighting for it right now. Near the crease. Air Force still up with it. 30 seconds on the play clock. Trying to get up with it. And a nice save. Nope, they're going to say he was out. Actually, it looks like that's going to be it for the third quarter. 
So 11 to 2 is the score right now. Air Force picks up a few more and Utah State gets one of their own. We're going to enter the fourth quarter with the score 11 to 2 here at Campus Stadium. Norm, he lives with anxiety, but with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. Fourth quarter lacrosse happening here at Canvas Stadium as the score 11 to 2 between the Falcons of Air Force Academy and the Utah State Aggies. As we've got some exciting lacrosse still on the docket for us today. 11 to 2 the score. These two teams fighting for a spot to move on in the conference tournament with a chance at potentially going to the national tournament and being one of the top 16 teams in the nation. But right now, I got to get through this game. Single elimination, so whoever wins is moving on. Whoever loses, their season is over. The Air Force holding a commanding lead, but the majority of those goals came in that first quarter. They were able to pick up a couple big ones towards the end of the third quarter, extending their lead 11 to two. The Aggies have had some good looks, but so far it's been all Air Force throughout this match. The Aggies across with it through the center, all the way down the middle, and a bounce pass scoop is no good and out. So Air Force will switch the possession to their side, and they'll send it to Curtis in the net. Trey Curtis, six foot one, 240 pounds. He is a big presence as the net miner for the Falcons. The Aggies moving up the field, pushing it up. They've got a man all by himself, and his shot is wide left of the sidebar and cannot get in. It looked like he had a little bit of space there, at least able to make a good shot. That was, I believe that was number 10, Bray Kurtz, who had the shot. But he was just pulling too hard across his body. And the, and the shot goes wide left. Now he's still with it, though. That was one of the better looks they've seen all day. And now a pass goes through the net, through the basket. It is of an Aggie player. And a whistle is blowing this play dead. I haven't seen a lot of those breakaway plays for the Aggies this afternoon. They have been a team that's had to kind of fight to get good shots off, and, and they've gotten them, but not able to execute on them as much yet. But that was a shot that, you know, if, if you're Kurtz, Looking back on that one, you, you wish you had that and one back. Like and not to say it was an easy shot at all, but one of the better looks they had had all afternoon long. Yep. But you 
also recognize, like, if you did... Air Force sends that one in. Curtis checks I mean, out you'd never, like, on his end. So a new man in the net, I believe, for Air Force. That's going to be number 34, Ashton Rubio, who enters the net for the Falcons of Air Force Academy. Air Force still in control, and Blamires stops it on the inbound pass. Right over the crease. Spencer Bishop through the middle, has to go through a couple. And we got an Air Force penalty coming. And Bishop was hit hard, and he was shaken up. He got two flags. One on the near side of the field and the other one up towards the 50-yard line on the far side. And a man down now for the Aggies. That might be Spencer. Spencer got hit pretty hard when he was whipping around trying to get through the center. Two separate flags came out. The first one at least will be on Air Force. And actually, it looks like there was a third flag that came out on the field too. Let's take a look at our OB's replay. Take a look at where that contact happened. That that's what seemed to shake up Bishop. He was able to get up a little bit, but now he's back down. And with him down, we're going to take a 30 second break and come back with hopefully some more information when we come back. Jason, let's go see your room. Welcome back here as we are just getting some information on what happened as first and foremost, Spencer Bishop able to walk off under his own power. You have two penalties on the play, one of them for slashing, another one for helmet to helmet. So we're going to have two men in the box right now. So a two man advantage for the Aggies. Got to make something happen here. And as I said, thankfully, Spencer Bishop was able to come off on his own power, but He's a big player on that attacking team. It's going to be a tough person not to see in that lineup. Big advantage for the Aggies right now, just trying to really execute on that. They're just spinning the circle right now. Around the edge, up through the middle, and across. You don't want to have any passing errors at this point. Goes through and there's the passing error. And you lost it. That's, that that's exactly what you thing. didn't want to happen you in that position. The two-man advantage. Now I understand. Like that's and ending up throwing it away. And now Air Force with a chance here to at least just take some time off the clock. Uh, oh yeah. Getting one of their players I mean, back. Like anybody that watches NFL and then both. You have to do, like, what an idiot. Like, dude, you couldn't make the varsity team in high school. Like, Pass goes up around the edge for Air Force. And they're back at full strength. At, at a speed that rivals. Uh, Mark Tang, five goals in the first quarter. Like He's got the possession right now and loses it. With this, like, similar speed to that. Physical fight for the ball. On the ground, both players go down, and it's scooped up by the Aggies. Tang a little slow to get up, but hustles his way back out. Ten minutes and 30 seconds remaining in regulation here for game two of the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament. Game one was dominated by the Bobcats of Montana State. Game two, so far, it's been all Air Force. 
And remember, and there's the flag. A late flag came. And the Aggies will get a delayed penalty on Air Force when and if they lose possession. There's a shot on net, and it's gobbled up inside the net by number 34, Ashton Rubio, and there comes, here comes the delayed penalty. So the penalty coming on for number 37, Donson Piotrowski for slashing. So another advantage, and we've seen a couple of these today for the Aggies. They, they've been in the advantage and a two-man advantage just recently and have not been able to even really get much of a shot on goal, let alone execute and take advantage of this. So we'll see what they can do here. With one extra man, or at least one less man, on the defense. Got to just start getting some shots on the net here. Trailing 11 to 2. Here's a shot on net, and that's exactly what they needed. That one goes through and in. And the goal is made by number 13 for Utah. That's Trevor Cosby. So Cosby sends one from the edge and scores on number 34, Ashton Rubio, the new net miner for Air Force. It's good passing all around, good ball movement. Couldn't scoop it out. Trevor Cosby. Cosby, one of the few Colorado residents playing for Utah State. He's out of Aurora, Colorado. Went to Grandview High School. Nice to see a Colorado guy scoring for the Aggies. Air Force is also one of those schools that, you know, even though they're located in Colorado, they're a school that you see a lot of out-of-state students coming to. So a handful, actually, I'm, I'm only seeing one Colorado player on Air Force's lineup. Air Force only having one local playing on their team today. Everyone else from out-of-state. Here's a shot into the net. Into the back of the net, it looks like. So it will not be a goal. Came on and got caught in that back side of the net. As the wind picks up even more. We're getting some gusts of wind as Air Force picks up the turnover. They'll bring it back. Eight minutes, 21 seconds remaining. Air Force taking time off the clock now. Utah just not able to get their offense up and running the way they've wanted. Trying to get the angle. Can't quite get to it. That's Jacob Freeman who was not able to get an inside angle. And the shot goes wide left and out of play. Now Air Force once again with 30 seconds on the play clock. Looks like Air Force has Jack Ninos, who has it on the ground, has to try to throw it up, and there's too many dark jerseys around, and now Ninos is down. Ninos very slow to get up on the other side of the field. Not sure if he took a hit there or if he just twisted his ankle. He fell down when he was going to throw the ball away. And as I said, I'm not sure if he took a hit or if he just twisted something. He is needing to be helped off the field. Hopefully he's okay. He got up pretty quickly after the whistle was blown, but as you see there, definitely favoring that left leg. Ball went out of bounds. And it should be Air Force possession. So 
Air Force goes right over the outstretched long stick. And across. Long pull gets rid of it and up the middle. Morbius up top. That's time it's Freeman. Actually, that's Medina. Now that's Freeman up to Medina and over to Morbius. Inside the middle, shot on net is wide right and out of bounds. Let's see what they give it to. They give it back to Air Force. So the Aggies were trying to say they were closest to it. Freeman gets the edge up the middle, has a lane. Freeman takes a shot. It's high and out. Twenty seconds now on the shot clock. Ball is tipped in, stolen away by the Aggies. Aggies playing pretty good defense here late in this fourth quarter. Blamire, he leaves the crease with the ball. The Aggies blasting through a few sticks. Spin move made there by Dennison. And it looks like the Aggies are going to take a timeout. And we'll take a timeout with them. Five minutes, 49 seconds remaining. The score 11 to 3. You're watching College Lacrosse right here on FanView TV. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Five minutes, 49 seconds remaining in regulation here in game number two of our weekend series in the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference Tournament. Winner moving on, and the loser faces the end of their season. So right now, Air Force looking to be that team as they are up with a commanding 11-3 lead over Utah State. The Aggies struggling on their possession here as they throw it well away. Looked like that one just slipped out of the basket. And it's Air Force ball now. A little broken ankle there on that play. Air Force just skating around their defenders. Aggies take it. And they'll get a chance to answer right back here on the attack. The Aggies taking their time. Five minutes on the clock, 56 seconds remaining on the play clock. Trying to go middle, bounce shot, goes wide right of the net, and they'll have 49 seconds to make a play here. Running up near the middle is Dennison Jones. Dennison. Behind the net, circles the arc, goes straight towards the middle and lost control of the ball. They're going to go up to Bishop Spencer, Spencer Bishop. 
And Bishop with it. 20 seconds now on the play clock. And another loose ball. Air Force with it. Now they've got numbers going up. Three on three. Up with it. Little sidestep underneath. Easy shot and easy score there. Number 23, Benjamin Morfitt, the sophomore out of New York with the finish. That was a beautiful sequence there as you check on the scoop. Able to take it down with numbers. It was a three on three heading down with three white jerseys, three black jerseys. And in the end, Morfitt fakes it, goes underneath and says, yeah, I'll take this one in the top right corner. Good play there. And our OB's replay. Morfitt again. It's guarded heavily and skates by a defender. That time, a little too skatey. Slipped up in the turf and, and then a missed pass. Air Force somehow able to recover. Morfit right where we left him, across the edge. And it is a whistle. Timeout taken by Air Force. Wanted to give you guys a quick reminder and thank our sponsor, Colorado State University Lacrosse, for sponsoring this entire tournament and putting this entire tournament on here at this beautiful venue, being able to play here at Canvas Stadium. As you see the shot of the stadium right there, just an absolutely gorgeous day for some college lacrosse. And, you know, as we mentioned, we, you know, we, the opportunity for us to be able to bring you coverage of this game is brought to you by CSU Lacrosse. So a big thanks to them. And we're just excited to be here. Christian Saya is on the call along with our entire production team at Stream It Sports. Enjoying uh, our Friday afternoon, bringing you some good college lacrosse. And this is just the beginning. We've got games going through the weekend. We saw some of the players and teams making their way towards the locker room, getting ready for the games after this and for tomorrow. And all of it for a chance to play in the national tournament if they can get through this weekend. Both teams taking the field with three minutes and 30 seconds, just about three minutes and 34 seconds remaining in regulation. And Air Force, barring some miracle for the Aggies, will walk away moving forward to the next game. Nice defense there by the Aggies. They'll take it and move it up the field a little bit. Aggies through the middle, tripping up and falling to the turf. And Air Force will take over and play the slow passing game to take some time off the clock. You got 70 seconds to figure out a shot and put something on net as time continues to wind down. They come up the middle, try to do a little underhand dish towards the net, but they are unsuccessful. And Blamires will just toss it off to one of his long pulls. Far side pass. And across. Aggies on the pressure on the attack. A little push from behind during the pass. Caused that mis mishap on the pass, but the Aggies still hold on to it. And they push it up towards the point. Here they come in the middle, and that bounce pass is in traffic and bounces over the left side of that net. They've got to scoop it up and reset with under two minutes remaining. Minute 45. 30 seconds on the play clock. Some 
tripping going on there as he was almost about to fall over. A scuffle for the ball. And Air Force comes away with it. Air Force a little spin move. Still getting through traffic. And then dishes it out to one of his attackers. As we've got Air Force with it now with 60 seconds on almost both clocks. We've got about a five second differential between game clock and play clock. So they will have to take a shot of some sort. I've said this a few times before, but even though the score dictates 12 to 3, the Aggies with a good showing in this one. A lot of good shots on goal. A lot of good possession time in their favor. Just not able to finish on some of those shots and, and really good defense. And a good job by Curtis in the net. Able to hold them to only three. And one of those goals came when Curtis left and it was Ashton Rubio who was scored on. Five seconds on the play clock. Takes the shot and it's blocked by Blamire. And a wide pass up is saved and thrown all the way down. And that will be it. Air Force comes away with a game one victory on their first match of this tournament. 12 to three, the final score as the Falcons defeat the Aggies of Utah State and will continue on to the next round of this tournament. And the Aggies for them, their season finishes here in Fort Collins. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to be bringing you these games as we saw a fun one earlier with Montana State and Metro State. Montana State took the victory in that one. And then this one, Air Force, held away with a 12-3 victory over Utah State, the Aggies. From our sponsor, CSU Lacrosse, for making this possible, as well as our production team, Stream and Sports, I'm Christian Saez, saying thank you guys so much for being a part of this, and enjoy the rest of your weekend watching some good lacrosse here at Kansas Stadium. Have a good weekend, everyone.